This video from Learn Electrics follows on from a previous video on transposition of electrical formulas. Or, should I say, this video should precede the first one. It's come about because several people have watched the first one and have now asked for a video that goes right back to the basics of rearranging formulas. Something in the simplest of forms that will help everyone to understand and become confident in the transposition of formulas. What is the simple step-by-step -step routine to get from one formula to another, especially those formulas that may be asked in assessments and exams? The often quoted formula is the adiabatic equation, used for selecting earthing conductor sizes. There are two versions of the adiabatic equation shown in the wiring regulations book and we've been asked frequently how do we get from the formula on page 98 to the formula page 199 and what are the steps involved and please keep it simple. Let's look at this. When rearranging formulas the golden rule is keep both sides of the equation balanced. Whatever you do to one side, you must do to the other side. Take this equation, 5 equals 2 plus 3. And I like to imagine a seesaw or balanced beam as shown. If both sides are the same, then the seesaw, the beam, will be balanced. An equation should always be balanced on both sides. Whatever you do to the left side, you must also do to the right side. So here we've added 2 to the left side and now we must add 2 to the right side to keep things balanced. And that's all that there is to it. Before we get to the adiabatic equations let's start with the very simple loop impedance formula with which we should all be familiar. A formula where all that we need to do is to add and subtract numbers. This is the formula for ZS, the system loop impedance. We all know that ZS equals ZE plus R1 plus R2. But how do we extract ZE from this? How do we get ZE on its own? First things first, we do not separate the R1 plus R2 in the formula. And to show that they always stay together, we can put brackets around them to remind us. If we want ZE on its own, then we need to remove R1 plus R2 from the right hand side. We do this by subtracting R1 plus R2 from both sides. Remember, what you do to one side, we must do to the other side. So we have ZS minus R1 plus R2 is equal to ZE plus R1 plus R2 minus R1 plus R2. On the right hand side the plus R1 plus R2 and the minus R1 plus R2 will cancel each other out. This will leave ZS minus R1 plus R2 on the left and just ZE on its own on the right as shown here. And we can tidy this up a little. It's common practice to put the subject, the number that we want to know, on the left hand side. So we can move ZE equals right over the way to the left to give us ZE equals ZS minus R1 plus R2. Can we prove this with numbers? We started with ZS as the subject and ended up with ZE as the subject. Let's say that ZS equals 9. ZE is 6 and R1 plus R2 is 1 plus 2. The equation balances. 9 on the left equals 6 plus 1 plus 2 on the right. Or we could say that 9 equals 6 plus 3. Now subtract 3 from both sides. 9 minus 3 on the left equals 6 plus 3 minus 3 on the right. And then the 3s on the right will cancel out since plus 3 minus 3 is 0. 
This leaves 9 minus 3 on the left as equal to 6 on the right, or 6 equals 6. Notice that at every stage the maths is correct on both sides of the equal sign. We've now confirmed that ZS is 9 and ZE is 6. So far, so good. We can start with the same formula for ZS as before and rearrange this to make R1 plus R2 the subject. This is where bracketing R1 plus R2 really helps. It helps in keeping control of what is going on. We need to move ZE to the left hand side and we do this by subtracting ZE from both sides of the equation. So we have ZS minus ZE on the left is equal to ZE plus R1 plus R2 minus ZE on the right. We can cancel the ZEs on the right to leave R1 plus R2 on its own. And now we have our answer. ZS minus ZE is equal to R1 plus R2. Again, tidy this up. We want to know what R1 plus R2 is, so put R1 plus R2 equals on the left as shown in the grey box. Let's put in the numbers that were calculated from before into the yellow box. ZS is 9 and ZE is 6. If 9 on the left equals 6 plus 1 plus 2 on the right, we can rewrite this as 9 equals 6 plus 3. Now subtract 6 from both sides, so that we have 9 minus 6 on the left equals 6 plus 3 minus 6 on the right. Cancel out the 6s on the right hand side, and we are left with 9 minus 6 equals 3. 9 minus 6 is 3, so there is the proof that the equation balances. 3 equals 3. And we can say that R1 plus R2 is 3. All the numbers have worked through correctly. If we look at a different equation, the voltage drop formula, we see that the same step-by-step -step rules can be applied to it. The formula this time includes multiplications and divisions, but it's still fairly simple to do. Here is the voltage drop formula with VD or voltage drop as a subject. We might have been asked to make the length L the subject. If you wish, as I always do, bracket MVAM, as this expression will stay together as one. It is never split up. First, move the number 1000. The 1000 is on the bottom, a division. So multiply the right hand side by 1000. We must keep the equation balanced and so we also multiply the left side by 1000. On the right we have 1000 on the top and 1000 on the bottom. So these will cancel out. This leaves VD multiplied by 1000 on the left equal to MVAM multiplied by IB multiplied by L on the right. And that is stage 1 of this rearrangement. For stage 2, we need to move MVAM from the right to the left. We do this by dividing both sides by MVAM and then cancelling out those on the right side. Now we have the expression shown with just IB multiplied by L on the right. And stage 3 will finish the rearrangement. For stage 3, divide both sides by IB and then cancel out and this will leave IB on the left hand side as shown in the yellow box. We can tidy up again and make L the subject as in the blue box. The finished rearrangement is the length L is equal to VD multiplied by 1000 on the top with MVAM multiplied by IB on the bottom. And now we get to the adiabatic equations. 
follow the same step-by-step -step rules, and the rearrangement is really quite easy, even though it includes some squares and square roots. Let's look. This was the original question that we started with. How do we get from the formula shown on page 98 of the Brown Book to the one shown on page 199? Look on page 98 of the Brown Amendment 2 book and at regulation 434.5.2 and we have the formula to be used to find T for time. This is the time to reach the limiting temperature for the earth conductor. It answers the question. How many seconds will it take for a particular conductor to reach the limiting temperature beyond which thermal damage may occur? And this is the rearranged formula as shown on page 199 in regulation 543.1.3. S is the subject. This time it answers the question, what size earth conductor will not exceed the limiting temperature in the time given for a given current flow? In step 1 we start with the formula for T for time. T equals K squared multiplied by S squared and divided by I squared. As I squared is on the bottom, a division, let's move this first. To remove this division, multiply both sides by I squared, as shown. Now we can cancel out to remove I squared completely from the right hand side. And this will give us the partial completion of I squared multiplied by T on the left is equal to K squared multiplied by S squared on the right. Now move on to step 2. Square root both sides. This will cancel the squares on the right hand side. Leave the left hand side as it is. Now divide both sides by K. This will move K to the left side and we can cancel the k's on the right. And there we have the finished formula with s on its own. Again we can tidy this up and write s equals on the left so that s equals the square root of i squared times t divided by k as shown in the book. There is an alternative solution for step 2 and the question is often asked, are they mathematically different or are they the same? Well, let's see. We have the same starting point for step 2, which is i squared times t on the left equals k squared times s squared on the right. This time, divide both sides by k squared and then cancel out on the right to remove k squared top and bottom. Now square root both sides of the equation. On the right hand side the square root of s squared is just s on its own. The square and the square root will cancel each other out. Tidy this up by putting s equals on the left side and we have s equals the square root of i squared multiplied by t and divided by k squared. But are they the same? We can find out by putting some numbers in and checking that the answer s is the same for both equations. If we make i equal to 10, t equal to 4, and k also equal to 4, then what is s? On the left hand side is the formula as shown on page 199 of the brown book. On the right hand side we show the alternative formula. Pause the video and follow the working out. We find that both formulas for S will give the same answer, S equals 5. Try it with different numbers. The practice will help your understanding and confidence. So it doesn't matter which formula you find for S. Both give the same answer and this is useful to know. When rearranging formulas or transposing formulas, remember the basic rules. 
Whatever you do to one side, do exactly the same to the other. Take one step at a time, it's easier and you can easily see where you go wrong. Trying to do several steps at the same time may lead to errors. Try putting some numbers into the finished formula. If the numbers make sense, then the formula is probably correct. And practice to become proficient. Don't wait until you need to use the formula. With time, you'll start to become quicker at this and begin to find your own method of working efficiently. We hope you now understand more about formulas and that you've added a little more knowledge to your mental toolbox. It all helps in your career. Thank you for watching. It really is appreciated. And I hope that you found the video useful and informative. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget, you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.